yards, four blocks versus Elon. You see the numbers without Trace Jackson Davis. He's got to step up and have another monster game in the paint. So a look on the right on what the Hoosiers look like with Ray's Thompson, without Trace Jackson Davis, of course, Xavier Johnson, the point guard, out indefinitely, second straight game with him out. And this Kennesaw State team, they go with their typical starting lineup, and just this is a team that's experienced, and they can really shoot it from outside. I played well at Florida, lost by 10 points. Young blood at 14 tonight, also Terrell Burden, a guy that some feel could play at the Power 5 level. So with injuries, maybe some of the trappings of the holiday coming up, we'll see what Indiana comes out with tonight. As Malik Renu wins the tap out to Galloway, and here we go for the final game in the non-conference for the Hoosiers. And Indiana beat Elon here at home on Tuesday, and they'll have 13 days off after this game into the new year before they play Iowa. And Miller Kopp with the first shot of the night, and it's rebounded by Kaysen Jennings for Kennesaw State. Great pass by Thompson. He faces the double. He doesn't try to conquer it. Kicks it out to Miller Cop. And those are the wide open threes, especially in the big games, the Indiana Hoosiers have to knock down. And Cop hitting it 45% on the year. And the drive for Burton is off and down to Galloway. Well, here's Jalen Hood, Shafino shaking in, and he gets the roll for the opening basket of the night. And the reason that opened up is because Race Thompson cleared out the lane like a fullback. Gave him space, easy basket, great play by number 25 for Indiana. Just playing his best basketball right now. The last three games averaging 15 and 8. And clearing the space out there. And we told you they could shoot it from outside, Jeff. And Kennesaw State with their opening hit with Jennings. And the Owls are 14th. In Division One in three-point percentage, they've got their first lead on the Jennings three. Hoosiers coming off scoring 90 plus in the win against Elon the other night. And into Thompson off the spin and the hook goes down. Yeah, just a big time move. He was patient. The double did not come and he went to work. So Ray's Thompson 9.6 rebounds on the season, but upping that not only in the game without. Trace Jackson Davis with the last three overall. There's Jennings, another hit, this time from the corner. Yeah, and this is the problem with Indiana right now. They have fallen out of the Ken Palm top 25 defensively, and Jennings, a 41% three-point shooter, and he's got two open looks in the first two minutes of the game, and they're just dis discombobulating these first 10 minutes, not guarding the way they were guarding earlier in the year. And Vic Shafino had that knocked out of his hand, so to be Hoosier's ball. But Mike Woodson talked about just that against Elon the other night. Yes, a big win, but he said we were terrible guarding the ball. We got to be better there. He's really frustrated with the ball screen defense, but that's just not paying attention to the scouting report. Just frustrated right now with the injuries, the defense. This is a huge game for Indiana going into Christmas break. You cannot afford to be lackadaisical and let this game be close late. You saw what happened to Iowa. This is a tough time of year. Upsets are happening all over the country. It was Eastern Illinois the other night that went in and beat Iowa uh, with some injuries. So you got Xavier Johnson out indefinitely. He had surgery on Wednesday on his foot. Trace Jackson Davis, if you just joined us, not a go tonight. And the Hoosiers will have 13 days off after this game to get him back in there before they start the resumption of Big Ten play. A couple of threes for Kennesaw State, one of the nation's best three-point shooting team. And out to an early lead. Here's DeMond Robinson, their top post player, and going to work on Renew, and that's way off. And Thompson up ahead, had it whisked away, but he saves it. So it's Jalen Hood, Shafino, his second full game. There's the primary ball handler. Mike Woodson's talked about that. Needs some help. But he's the only true point guard that the Hoosiers have healthy right now. And a renew, he splits two, and he gets fouled. And he has two shots. So Kennesaw State, Amir Abdul Rahim is in his fourth year, and just this program has gotten better with each season. Started with no wins in conference, and they're in the middle of the pack of the A-Sun last year. Oh, absolutely. He's the right man for the job. This team just a few years ago had one win, one of the worst teams in the country. 
He has built this from the ground up. One of the few teams in the country that has all five starters returning. Seven out of their top eight scores are back. There you see the numbers. Just drastic improvement. And in, in a world of the transfer portal, everyone has wanted to stay around and build this at Kennesaw State. It's because of his character. I had a wonderful time talking with him today. He loves the job, the opportunity. And trust me, they think they can win this game, especially with all the injuries Indiana has right now. Uh, one connection to Indiana, of course, he was a Tom Crean assistant at Georgia. That was the stop he was at before he took the Kennesaw State, Kennesaw State job four years ago. Uh, Georgia native, coaching at Georgia school, and nothing going inside yet. Both of their baskets from three. Uh, Hood Chafino has it stripped, but Thompson's there. And uh, cop off of a shot fake, gives it up for Renew. There's Malik Renew to that left hand, but it spins off. There's Terrell Burton probing inside the lane. And out for a young block three. Nope. And that's out to the Hoosiers. Well, just another wide open three. Coach Woodson just looks down at the bench at the coaches and said, Wait a minute, who are we guarding? Youngblood, if you give him that kind of look, he's going to hit five threes in this game. Now, Youngblood's a 45% three-point shooter, so you compare that to what the Adams running out there. That's Miller Cobb, but they just left wide open. Kennesaw State, a lot of man-to-man. -man. They're throwing some zone, they'll press you, double you. Just try to disrupt what you do offensively. They disrupted Renew down to six to shoot in the hands of Hood Shafino. He gets it up, foot in the line, and doesn't get the bounce. So a bit of a slow start for Indiana offensively. Just ahead of the first time out. And Burden into the seats, and the Hoosiers will have it back. After the timeout, final game before Christmas. Hoosiers without Trace Jackson Davis trailing by one. Get to play against them. Pretty good crowd, but they've got to get off to a fast start here in the next couple minutes. Play inside out and get back in transition defense. We're going to font you as Jim Neighbors if you uh, keep singing back home again in Indiana next time. <laughs> well done. Hey, no, no one's saying it any better, right? I grew up going to the race. Well, slow start for the Hoosiers down on this end, but Malik Renew gets him going in tight. Yeah, Kennesaw State gives up 54% on two-point field goals, so that's the game plan for Indiana. Get the ball inside, keep pounding it, play inside out. Renew's had three or four shots out. He finally stayed under composure and put it in. Well, Jess, we were talking about this coming in, and a lot of attention is given to this, especially in those big games. Rutgers, Arizona, and Kansas, the Hoosiers have started slow. Yeah, there's no question, and that's really going to be the story of the second half if they get into Big Ten play. I mean, a 17-0 run they gave up to Arizona, 12-2 start at Kansas. I think they gave up 14 offensive rebounds at Rutgers, so they're going to have to find a way to compete harder in the first 10 minutes of these big games, and tonight as well. And a couple of looks at it. You are just talking about offensive rebounds, Jess, but Race Thompson eventually clears it away. Kennesaw State, even when they're not hitting, they're going to keep getting threes up, but they typically shoot it at a high clip from outside. And that Renew just got him going on the basket. Now the pass. It's Race Thompson underneath. A great job by Race Thompson, cutting with integrity. Renew keeps his head up. No double. Easy assist. That's what they have to do, find points in the paint, like they did against Xavier in North Carolina. They've got eight points in the paint. Nothing yet inside the paint for Kennesaw State. As Burton misses that three. And Indiana, everything inside the paint except for that one shot that Hood Shafino took from outside. And here's Renew down the baseline. Two bigs playing catch. And Thompson drawing a crowd. Three bodies around him, but he can't get the shot to fall. Great defense by Jennings to fight Race Thompson. A lot smaller, but he hung in there, and pushed against him, and came up with the rebound. And Thompson got the tie-up, stays on this end with Kennesaw State. Yeah, they're asking Race Thompson to do a lot, set screens, shoot three-pointers, rebound. He reads the defense, cuts right off the glass. Great job by our camera team, and that's the way he's been playing lately. He's been a star. No Trace Jackson Davis, no problem. 
Now that double-double against Elon on Tuesday, that was his first since last February on the road against Michigan State. He's been right on the fringe throughout non-conference. It finally gets that true double-double at 18 and 11. And steps in the post for Demond Robinson. Turnover to Indiana. Hey, coming up after the game, get all the news and highlights from around the conference on the Big Show. Coming up next on Big Ten Network. Right, Pizzo and the guys have it covered at the half and after the game tonight. And Renew turns it over. So a lot of action, Jess, as you expected, even without Trace Jackson Davis through those two guys so far. Renew and uh, Race Thompson. Yeah, no question. That's what they want to do. Renew's got to get his turnovers under control. And in a game like this, he might get away with it. But that three turnovers against Elon, two versus Kansas, two versus Arizona, and that's in 15, 11, and 13 minutes. So he plays like a freshman, and uh, that's just fine. But in the big games, he's got to handle the ball well. It looks like we got a shot to the face possibly here. And Terrell Burden was out handling the ball, and Jalen Hood Shafino right in his shorts got him in the face coming off this ball screen into the ball game for indiana number 22 jordan Geronimo. just a common foul play on and coach woodson really stressing getting that first leg over that high ball screen and the chafino just went with his hands instead and picked up the foul and so hood chafino who picks up the foul just the common foul and that ball out to Cottle on the perimeter, and he backs a three. Uh, this The fearless freshman is what the coaching staff called him. Backs up Burton, comes in, just not afraid to let it fly. And again, if you're Indiana, you'd rather trade some twos once in a while to protect that three-point line. Uh, Jordan Geronimo into the game, and he has that cut off with Robinson hitting the floor. And then Jess, we weren't. 100% sure if we would see Jordan Geronimo out last game with the dislocated finger, but he gets early run. Yeah, it's great to see him. He's, he's going to be a huge factor in Big Ten play. Playing that small forward position, he's going to get more minutes, going to knock in that open three, but it's great to see him healthy. And for a while there, we weren't even sure they're going to have enough guys to have a game. I mean, it's been that bad around here lately. And we'll stay this way. I mean, yeah, you, Xavier Johnson, Jordan Geronimo, Trace Jackson Davis all out of that game on Tuesday. And if they do get Geronimo back, Johnson will be out for a while. Jackson Davis, at least for this game. Tied up at nine just ahead of that under 12 media timeout. Hoosiers looking to go into Christmas with their final non-conference win and get to double digits with their 10th. Thompson left all alone, but too strong. And the rebound for Robinson running it down the baseline. Well, coming into this game, Grace was 8 for 27 from beyond the arc. He hit four of those against Arizona. So if you're Kennesaw State, you want to make him prove that he's going to knock in that open shot. That's really the scouting report against Indiana. Make Grace Thompson shoot the three. He's capable of shooting it, but he's a lot tougher down around the post. He's gotten a little bit more comfortable out there, and there's Adam McCoya with the three to give Kennesaw State the lead. That's his 14th three of the game, and you have to know the scouting report. You have to know who's subbing in, where the shooters are. That's the only way Kennesaw State can come here and get a win if they get on fire from beyond the three-point line. And then it was a cold start, but some turnovers for Indiana have helped, too. And back-to-back -back segments where the Hoosiers have gone to their bench trailing. Yes. I was going to say, we've got Bart Fox, class of 1990, the School of Journalism, producing the game tonight. Produced of the year. We got, I saw Joe Hillman earlier in the crowd, 1989, Hoosier legend. Talked to Don Fisher before the game. Stars are out. And uh, it's great to be here, buddy. Yeah, uh, say that a little bit louder for me. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> with Kennesaw State with the three-point lead. They hit that three before the break from Adam Akoya. And they keep chucking him up and keep knocking him down. Spencer Rogers from out deep. 
Yeah, that's five out of nine from beyond the arc. They've hit 27 of their last 86 coming in. So at 30%, they've been a, lot, a little bit off. But this is a team that lives behind that arc, and you can see why. This, this lead is no surprise. And a tough shot from Tamar Bates coming off the bench. Give the Hoosiers some scoring. Uh, he's just one of the best, best bench players in the country. Just such an instant spark and really shooting at this end, though. They've got to guard the line. you got to find Youngblood. He has not scored yet for Kennesaw State. Can't let him get going. Uh, nothing doing inside. Thompson had the defense on Robinson, but right back to DeMond Robinson. And it's in and out. So C.J. Gunn, who has to handle a little bit more of the ball without Xavier Johnson. He's in there with Hood Shafino. And it's out to Tamar Bates, and the three's in and out. Yeah, they call him Scoop Bates, and that was an outstanding look. Those are the ones he has to take, and those are the ones he has to make. Well, one already went down for Adam McCoy, not here, though. That was almost a, a four-leaf clover type three there for Tamar Bates. Almost skipped right into his hands off the deflection. Hoosier still trailing by four. Here's Gunn getting it up. And too strong. Yeah, Gunn was sensational against Elon in limited minutes. Came in has one of the best offensive rebound putbacks of the year I've seen so far. He is so stout defensively. Only played about 85 minutes so far this year, but already has eight steals. So with all of the injuries, look for number 11 for Indiana to really make his case tonight that he needs more minutes. Adam McCoy called for that foul. Yeah, what a cap to the half the other night for C.J. Gunn. Off the best game of his career. And but you're right, Jess. It was that slam right before halftime. That was the most emphatic of his 11 points he had against Elon on Tuesday. Yeah, that was very impressive. I think even Rick Pizzo came out of his seat in the studio for that one. Now back into the post with Geronimo. And the hook is true for Jordan Geronimo. Yeah, he's just such a huge piece of the puzzle going forward. I like this smaller lineup that Indiana is playing. I think sometimes they get stuck guarding themselves with the traditional four and five. And these are things we'll talk about as the game goes on, but they have a lot of practice days coming up to see how they're going to play offensively, handle the injuries, but they can't be afraid to go with this smaller lineup, open the lanes for drives, more three-point shooting, and let's see how these guys respond right here. Kennesaw State, good defensively. They turn you over, make you do things you don't want to do. There's Geronimo sweeping in, and he draws the foul. And Geronimo in attack mode right now, Jess. Yeah, there's the crab dribble. I mean, pretty good defense. Shouldered him up, went over with his left shoulder, baby hook shot. I just really like his game, the way he can get on the glass. He can block shots. Just got to get healthy. I was Talking to Coach Woodson today, he said we're just so beat up. I mean, even the guys out on the floor banged up. This kid can really get up and down and has a ton of bounce, plays with a lot of energy, and gets the crowd into the game. And just Coach Woodson said it's really about the pain tolerance with that wrapped up finger. How much can Geronimo take? And it couldn't go on Tuesday, but feeling well enough to play tonight. And that'll go down to the 12. Yeah, he's only two for 12 from beyond the arc, 75% from the three th free throw line. So he's the guy when Race and Trace are facing the double teams, he's the guy that's getting left open. And when they do go with that smaller lineup, he's got to knock in that three-point shot. And when he starts doing that, then all of a sudden you have to respect Indiana's offense more. And the big guys will face more singles rather than doubles. And we've seen what Geronimo can do off the bounce and in the open court this year. Terrific athlete playing on top of the rim. Kennesaw State still with the lead, under eight in the first half. Looking for their first Big Ten win ever, 0-9, for a program that hasn't been in Division One for that long. And to the rim, they finally get something inside with Jennings. Well, that was 29 seconds worth of great defense, and they got nothing out of it. And Galloway and Geronimo, a little two-man. We'll put over to Gunn. And Geronimo spinning down the baseline, no. And it's torn out of there by Stroud. Kennesaw State's trying to build on their lead. 
And the pull up pop too strong for Young Blood. Tamar Bates had the early basket coming off the bench, forced to give it up. There's Gunn dumping down for Duncombe, and he's fouled. It'll be a baseline out for Indiana. Well, in the Hoosier State, Jess, some of your best high school teams ever. Coach Woodson today, they said nobody could stop him. You got East Chicago, Washington, representing the region, the finest team to ever come out of there, Indianapolis, Washington, and Lawrence North, I mean, Odin and Conley, it's hard to keep them off of there. I know they didn't have the classes, or they had the classes with them, but they still played an incredible national schedule. That's it, folks. If you uh, disagree, get on Twitter at Just Settles Hoops, and let's uh, let's talk about it the rest of the game. Did uh, did he not lobby you hard enough to get a Broad Ripple team on there, his alma mater? Bates, out of the timeout with the jam. I mean, we, we got Broad Ripple, Gary Roosevelt, Mylan he brought up. Arlington Tech, I mean, he brought them all up. Just, you, the list goes on and on. You could come up with 50 great high school teams in the state of Indiana. No, I'm just surprised that maybe not even an honorary mention of, of Broad Ripple. I, I thought he would have at least twisted your arm to, to get one of those guys on there. Hey, if, if anybody knows who the best teams are, it would be coach. But he talked about George McGinnis. He talked about Steve Downing. Indianapolis, Washington. Steve came here to IU. I think is still highly ranked in the rebounding ranks. I think Trace Jackson Davis is trying to chase him down, but so many stars. I talked to Fish before the game, and he was sold. Chicago, Washington, with Reuben Bailey and Daryl Adel. Who else? Went there? Turjevich, Tim Stoddard, and Junior Bridgman. He was convinced that was the team. There he is, the legend. 50 years behind the mic. He's seen it all. He said that team was incredible. And what about Damon Bailey's team? 41,000 people showed up to Dome to watch him take down Sean Kemp in the state finals. My goodness, we could talk about this the rest of the game. And I feel like that's entry into the state. You've got to know who Damon yeah. Bailey is just to get across the border. But inside, Damon Robinson, he's carved out a couple of points now for Kennesaw State. Yeah, hey, I, I blocked Damon's shot once, and I didn't think I was going to make it to the parking lot after the game. I mean, that's, uh, that, that guy's royalty. I should have just let him have it looking back. A hard screen from Renew, and they'll get him for the foul with Burton hitting the deck. So, Jess, we showed the graphic earlier about some of the slow starts for Indiana, and each time yeah. that we've gone yeah. into a timeout, Kennesaw State is... Slowly, it's been one point lead, three point lead, four point lead, but uh, Indiana can't crack that wall. Yeah, yeah, it's a big problem. And uh, look, this is no surprise. Kennesaw State came here to win this game. Five returning starters. They have some stars on their team, some scores. They're knocking in the three point shot, but it's the game plan. Indiana's really struggled with the game plan in the first 10 minutes, and uh, they're going to have to find a way to solve that now. There's yet another wide open three. And the top scorer for Kennesaw State gets one from outside. It's a seven-point Owls lead in the first half. And we talked about, look, you've got to close out, take away the three-point line. If they hit a few twos, then so be it. But you can't help off against a team that lives and dies by the three-point shot. And a quick shot from Bates, and one and done for the Hoosiers. And right now, Jess, Kennesaw State living by it. You said live or die by it. They've hit six in this first half. Had a 50% clip. There's Burton on the spin. Contested layup. No. And Thompson at the rebound. Yeah, Burton is so crafty. He does a nice job of drawing the crowd. All good point guards do. And that one should have gone down for him. Yeah, he's the exception. As Thompson gets fouled. But if Burton is the exception. He can hit threes. But actually does a lot of scoring from two. On a team that shoots a lot of yeah. so you got to close out, Jess. Uh, yeah, you look at the whiteboard. It says these guys can shoot. You can look Galloway on. There's no need to help in that situation. I mean, the bigs have the guard under control. He comes all the way into the paint. Great find. He's way too late to the party, and that's just a mental breakdown. He's got to know. He's got to stay home on same side help. No need to collapse. And again, the book coming in. Indiana knew that Kennesaw State could shoot the three well. 
the 36 percent. 14th in the country as far as their three-point clip as a team. But out shooting that percentage in the first half so far at 50%. Here's another one, and there you go. There's your closeout. Thompson blocks it while spilling into the bench. And bits on the stuff and young blood right back into the rim and Miller cop down there fighting for it he falls down and that'll go against Kennesaw State Jess it all started with the closeout in incredible the in incredible job by Galloway tagging the stagger race Thompson closes out gets his finger on it great job that's Indiana basketball and the throw down with the left hand this kid can play above the rim shoot the three that's the energy this arena needed when you play good defense, it leads to good things at the offensive end, and that's how you do it if you're in. You gotta take away the three and get out and run. And Jess, it was right after we we're just showing people back home a wide open shooter, Youngblood. Indiana corrected that real fast. The Kennesaw State runs a lot of stagger action, which means they're gonna send two screeners toward the baseline, and the shooters are gonna run off of those. And if you are guarding a shooter like Youngblood, you gotta put your hand right in his hip pocket and stay with him around those screens so that you're there when he catches the ball. Galloway did that perfectly, made him give it up. Race closed out with integrity, and then they're off to the races. That's what you have to do. That's what the scouting report says. If you go under the screens, you're dead. If you're slow to the spot, you're gonna get hit. Side, a strong drive for Adam McCoya. And he's going to the free throw line. So Grace Thompson with a big close up, but Kennesaw State's still up. And at one point in non conference, they were both a top 15 offensive and defensive efficiency team. But they've fallen outside the top 30 in both. And as they play the last non conference game tonight. And it's Adam McCoya at the free throw line. Jess, these are the first foul shots that Kennesaw State has against a Trace Jackson Davis list Hoosiers defense. Yeah, when you take that many threes, I mean, when you launch 35, 40 threes a game, you're probably not going to get a lot of whistles. And, and this is just how they play. They're a veteran team, they're a smart team, and they can really shoot the basketball. Might as well play like, like that, but you're not going to live or parade to the free throw line very much. No, lock up for Galloway. Couldn't stick it down, though. Got stuck on the front rim. Yeah, you heard the crowd start to rise. If Galloway could have cocked back and put that down. And another big moment following up that block from Thompson. And Kennesaw State leading most of this first half. There's Rogers spinning up the lane, and that second move, Thompson wasn't having it. Thompson drawing attention. Help side waiting for him. And the crowd comes. Little fumble. And gives it up. Galloway open. Next down the three. Well, a delayed double by Stroud. I wasn't sure what he was going to do there, but another brilliant pass out of the post. And it's nice to see 32 knocking down three pointers. Oh, Burden right back at you with the layup. Galloway has shown that scoring flash in moments, some explosive moments in this season. Nebraska scored 20. And the first Big Ten win. Back in his hands here. And gave it up for Cop. Here's it, Chifino. And Galloway wants a screen, doesn't need one. threes from Galloway. We're back to even. Man, looking for a crowd silencer. Not here for Stroud. Well, this is exactly what Galloway did against Nebraska. He hit four threes on his way to 20 points. 
And then just the outside stroke back again tonight. Uh, this is so great to see if you're a Hoosier fan. Only six out of 14 from three coming into this game. He just hasn't taken enough. Drills his second three-pointer. Today at shoot-around, Coach Woodson was pretty hard on him. He wanted him to play better, pass better, bring more energy to the arena. Now he got the message. He took the coaching, and he's come out and hit a couple huge shots right now to give the momentum back to Indiana. He is an elite-level player when he's totally locked in. In the last couple of games, it was the bottom part of that split that we just showed you. Some some major highs, but also some games where there's there's just not much there offensively. And since Nebraska, he had not hit a three until the two he just knocked in here in the first half. Yeah, he's just too good of a shooter not to take more. He needs to take four or five a game at least. You can see the rotation. Indiana again gets pulled into the lane. Another wide open three. Oh, Stroud, strong move to put it back. Off the skip, extra pass into Cop. Galloway getting it going with the shooting. It was Thompson who had the block. They got the Hoosiers into a bit better run of play here. Down to 10 to shoot. It's Bates on the step back. And the fall away in and out. The final minute of this first half, Kennesaw State will not take that timeout with them into the second half. So timeout and a tie score. Hoosiers looking for win number 10, their final nine. Three defenders, they're not coming right away. So Race either needs to go right away against a smaller opponent or he needs to ball fake to get those guys to close out on shooters and then he needs to attack. But right now they're reading him. By the time he gives it up, they're able to recover. So he's got to be a little quicker with those decisions. Kennesaw State used the user to lose it. Here's Burden. And nope. Here's Thompson with the rebound. Yeah, this is the second time Burton's been able to get deep in the paint and rimmed one out. So he turns the corner with authority, looking to score. Small, slicing, driving guard. That's uh, a kickball. One of the more obvious kicks you'll see, you see into the third row. You see uh, when Burton turns the corner, he looks to score. That's what point guards need to do. You turn to score, and if you have to dry those between you and Coach Katie, your fans deserve a Final Four, and look, Everybody's staying five, six, seven, eight years in the league now. Connor McCaffrey, that's my guy. Seven year of eligibility. I've got more gifts coming. I mean, Santa's not out of gifts right now. Coach Woodson in Indiana, they just want a win. That would be the best gift going into Christmas. Otherwise, that's going to be a miserable break. Stay tuned. Jess is giving away a tractor later, uh, maybe in the second half. <laughs> Turnover for Hood Shafino. Uh, Kennesaw State will have a chance to go into the locker room with the lead here. They led most of this first half. The Hoosiers just went on a good run, but down to three on the game clock. Off the shake. Three is up in the air and off the rim. And into halftime on the miss by Burton. So 27 all at Assembly Hall, but the Hoosiers are playing. Get the ball out, force Indiana to prove that they can hit the three-point shot. That's an area of concern for them. But right now, you got to play hard if you're Indiana. you got to play tough, and you have to play smart. You don't want this thing to be close down the stretch, or the pressure really adds up. So it started the second half, final non-conference game before a 13-day game break for Indiana. Won't play until the 5th of January, and a good start with Renew in tight. Yeah, great roll, better catch, excellent finish by Renew. And that's where this game started, was Renew and Thompson in the paint, Jess. And that's how the second half yeah, begins. Yeah, Tom, if you feed the post from the middle third of the court, well, then you can't double or use the baseline as a third defender. So they entered from the top that time. No help. Great draw by the Indiana staff coming out of the timeout. There's a nice jumper. They needed that one. Wide open from 18, Hood Shafino, and the first two fall for the Hoosiers. Indiana played from behind much of that first half. It was the first time that Kennesaw State has played a Big Ten team and has not trailed at halftime. All tied up at 27, but the first four to the Hoosiers in the second half. Kennesaw State back into the paint with DeMond Robinson. Barreling in on Renew, and Renew holds his ground. 
Yeah, just a weak move by Robinson. Great defense by Renew. Oh, but turned over. Hutchifino tried to thread it in there, and Burden comes underneath, and he whirls his way to the rim, and he gets fouled. Yeah, Burden, he's just lightning in a bottle. I mean, all great point guards draw a crowd. He probed there even on the fast break, kept his composure, kept his head up like a good running back. See what the defense gives you. And he went into that spin move, and it was lights out. Nobody was going to stop him. And so he'll have a couple at the line. Burden's been a, a big scorer. See the season numbers. He's been a big scorer two years running now for the Owls. It was about a year ago tonight yeah. that he was in Lincoln, Nebraska for Kennesaw State. He dropped 27 on the Huskers a year ago. Yeah, I knew where you were going with that. I mean, this guy is not afraid of the big stage. He's a power five guard, chose to stay home, build this program, and he's being rewarded. But he can get it done, and he can get hot. You have to try to keep him out of the paint. Shoots it very well from the three-point line as well, but just doesn't like to take a lot of them. 10 out of 18 from beyond the arc this year. Yeah, he's drive first, over 75% of his shots coming inside. And he is not a one skill guy. He had eight rebounds and six assists in that game against Nebraska last year we were talking about. And he flirted with triple triple double numbers. And it's Burden with the first points of the half for Kennesaw State. Now late clock. And Hope Shafino off the bounce. Well, there was just nothing happening there for Indiana's offense, and that's just a great player making a big time play with no time left on the clock. So two deep shots going down for Hood Shafino. He's got five since halftime, and this came with single digits on the clock. Yeah, just great defense, better offense. Not many guys can let it fly like that. Two seconds, bottoms. No doubt that he got it off in plenty of time but after the shot making. There you go again, Jess. Burden putting the pressure on with his driving ability. I think if you're Indiana, you can live with a little bit of that. You just don't want to get pulled in and have him kick it out for those three-point shots. Like I said, you don't want to give up twos and you don't want to foul, but there are times during a game against an elite three-point shooting team that maybe you trade twos rather than giving up those wide-open threes because you can't recover. Well, mark that foul, too. That's Hood Shafino's third. And remember, no Xavier Johnson to handle the ball. He's out indefinitely with the foot injury. So the primary ball handler out with foul trouble right now for Indiana. And down to three to shoot for the Owls. Fall away for Youngblood, no. And backside rebound, Galloway. Great job by Indiana taking away the three-point shot, making Kennesaw State put the ball on the floor, take tough mid-range jumpers. No true point guard out there for Indiana. It's Bates and Galloway to guard, and it's turned over by Bates. Into the open court, Stroud turned away and kept with Youngblood. And no roll there, but a foul underneath. So the Hoosiers get away with the turnover, foul against Kennesaw State. And Kennesaw State only down five, and Youngblood just one for eight from the floor. He's their best player. There's a lid on the basket, but those. Careless self-inflicted turnovers for Indiana just lead to runouts. And right now they're getting away with number three for Kennesaw State being off his game. You, know, you can't change a lot of your offensive schemes in a game like this. You have to take it home and get to Christmas break. But when th with this 13 days off they have coming up, and we'll talk about this in the second half, Indiana's got to find a way to fix their offense a little bit. They are guarding themselves a little too predictable. they got to find a way to get more drives and more open shots. Horseshoe there for Miller Cop. Went in, then back out. But no hit for Cop, the 45% three point shooter. And back into the post with Robinson. Renew hanging up strong, but Robinson right into his chest to score. Yeah, Coach Abdur Rahim said before the game, told, he told me that he's got to play tougher. He's a tough kid who has to play tougher. We're going to need him. He's a Big Ten body. That's the type of post play they need out of him. 
She fouled. Adam McCoya called for it. Thompson, and here's Robinson. This is what you're just talking about, Jeff. Yeah, taking a couple floaters and faders early in the game. He went straight up, drew the contact, didn't get the call, but nine points and five boards, 47% from the floor. Those are the power moves you have to make. And keep an eye on him down the stretch going to the rim. Here's Renew splitting the lane, and Robinson's in there late. Yeah. So it's Robinson scoring and then protecting his own basket. Just something about scoring that gives you energy at the defensive end. It's, just, it's hard to explain it. The guys will hit a bucket and they'll come down and they want to guard twice as hard. A little talking. Thompson and the guard burden. You're down there, Jess. Make out any of what was said? <laughs> Races basically said, just give me the ball. Burden's guard. Well, Thompson gets the ball. And he can't hit. Got what he asked for. And back in the hands of Burton, the lightning quick guard. And Cop taps it out of there. Takes out the legs of Burton, but it stays with the Owls. So talking, cranking up. Guys hitting the floor. And closer than some expected. He was tied at halftime. Final seconds of the shot clock. Robinson. And not here from outside. Well, he thought he had to let that one fly, but he's one for 12 on the year, so that's obviously not his strength. And Renew is caught in between there. Passed on the wide open three and takes steps. Hoosiers by three just after half. Playing against Xavier. X Johnson was responsible for a lot of those with dribble penetration, but 16 to 10, that's a big story with 15 28 to go. Keep feeding the ball inside to the banks. And if you just flip this over, that's your philosophy tonight, Jess. Get the ball into the bigs, even without Trace Jackson Davis. Out for a second straight game. And we're told it's precautionary. Be a 13-day break between games for the Hoosiers after tonight, where they play Iowa on January 5th. And Robinson back into the paint, and he took steps. So third game this year that Trace Jackson Davis has missed. He Missed the game right before the Thanksgiving holiday and now back to back before the Christmas holiday. And street closed tonight in the final non conference game. Yeah, very disappointed. Wasn't able to see him play in person. Love watching him play. One of the elite defensive centers in the country, best shot blocker in the country. He's got 36 career double doubles. So, you know, you're in a game like this, it's hard to lose 20 and 10 from TJD. We hope he gets healed up and has that All-American type of second half that he's capable of having. I was hoping you were going to go get up there on the wedgie, Jess. But, uh, yeah, All-American for Trace Jackson Davis. You mentioned the, the defense. He had that huge block game against Kansas. Big Ten leader in blocks, protecting Indiana's own yard. Also sixth in scoring and rebounding in the Big Ten. That's what they're missing right now. Hoping to get him back for the stretch front of conference play. Down to 10 to shoot here for Kennesaw State. No scoring since that last time out either way. And a deep three, and that goes down. Kaysen Jennings gets it going from outside again. I don't know what to say about Jennings. 41% from three, 16 out of 39 from three coming into this. It's just a guy, he's got Steph Curry range that you cannot allow to get an open look. You have to make him put it on the floor. And a guy that's playing freely and confidently lately for Kennesaw State into the starting lineup three games ago. And there's that double on Thompson, way too strong. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Right when he catches it, he's got to go up with it. If the double comes, and he's got to regroup and kick it out. Jennings drew the attention, and Youngblood splashes it in. Eight in a row, all to Kennesaw State in the last two plus minutes. Youngblood started cold, but the top score for Kennesaw State sees one go through. All right, you see that there, Connor? He's got to go right away or it's too late. And they had the dig, it got to him. Kennesaw State running with Jennings, and he gets hit by Bates. So that little delay, Jess, costs him a foul and a turnover. And now Kennesaw State shooting. 
Yeah, he catches the ball. He's got the mismatch. He has to attack right away. When he squares up, he puts the ball on the floor, shot fake, dribble, dribble, gives time for the dig, doesn't kick it out, and that just does not work. And he's too experienced to mess around like that. He's got to kick it out, move on, or attack right away and tear the rim down. that got hands on and Jennings in and out on the first it's got to be a little bit of a conflict for Thompson right because you've got the size edge in this game you know that we've talked about points in the paint but that was just maybe one or two many there yeah he, he sort of had his mind made up what he was going to do with it he wanted to put it on the floor but he's got to either take that little baseline shot kick it out or attack right away and at this level you just can't get away with putting the ball on the floor and the smaller guards are coming to get you it looked like a little bit of a frustration rebound for thompson too getting it back they don't make him pay no foul shots and then thompson threats it in geronimo and then foul shots the hoosiers way a great pass excellent read of the defense made a quick decision Geronimo I mean, he's struggling with the hand I mean he would typically dunk that or finish it off the glass but he's doing everything he can he knows how important this game is going into Christmas break and it's nice to see him out here battling I mean, you this is a time of year where you've got to play a little banged up if you can these are critical games it looked like a little piece of tape or maybe a little piece of that splint that he's wearing on the left hands came off. Saw the official toss it over toward the Indiana bench. You know, we mentioned it earlier, and the big question for me, Indiana has 13 days of practice. Can Race and Trace play together? Uh, can Renew play with those two guys? Can they go with that traditional big lineup like they have been? It almost feels like they're guarding themselves a lot when you watch a, a lot of tape on these guys. Not a lot of driving lanes, pretty predictable. Do they go with the four out, one in, go high ball screens, roll, kick it out action? That's something they're going to have to decide over the break. And that's going down Indiana's way off the miss. Well, yeah, that is the luxury because most teams are most teams in the league are playing on the first of the year right around there Indiana won't play till the fifth. So it is yeah, just about two full weeks Practice and experiment a little bit Yeah, you look at Arizona and Kansas and Rutgers. They just didn't guard race I mean, they're just loading up the lane trace Jackson has nowhere to go You can't get him free and that's going to be the scouting report on Indiana that we're just going to plug up the lane, make them shoot threes, and not let TJD beat us. So do they go with just the big center and around the four guards? Can Geronimo step up and make those three-point shots? Even defensively, Connor, what's been surprising it with the big lineup, they're not rebounding well. Uh, Rutgers just killed them on the glass in the first half. They're slow to recover to three-point shooters. They might have to look at a faster, slower lineup. Not obviously change everything, but maybe go with that type of sequence once in a while that's that's a big decision they're gonna have to make over christmas break and who's your fans can talk about over christmas christmas break and at first they'd like to avoid the upset tonight kennesaw state leading mid-second half and the lead builds with coddle on a three and brian walsh assistant coach for indiana just, just looking out there like well, you know I, there's not much else i can tell you this this kid can shoot the three get get your hand up Another one of those guys from Kennesaw State, 40% yeah. plus. And there it goes for Bates, slapping one right back. Yeah, they're 42% from beyond the arc. I like to see that. And Cottle just hit the three. Hook Shafino gets out on a missed time. Here's LaRue going to work on Thompson. And steps through, nothing there. Geronimo Not here and The rebound off the bounce for Rodgers Giving the Hoosiers the lead back and Bates got the crowd re-engaged on his three And Cottle saves this possession for the Owls There's Burton got the big Thompson on him and Thompson uses that length Closing out quick on Cop, and they got the block going against Kennesaw State. It is still a one-point lead for the upset-minded out. 
It's just a matter of defensively. Can they step up and make the plays at the defensive end? It's nice to see Bates stepping his game up fast court, three three point shots. They got to get Trey Galloway, Galloway more involved in the offense. And Huchifino, a little bit of foul trouble, but this is a great test for him down the stretch. Oh, Bates was left all alone, and he gives the Hoosiers the lead. Uh, just a brilliant call coming out of the timeout to get your best shooter a wide open three point shot. So Bates has two second half threes and it's a six nothing run for Indiana. And they've gone 50% from three. Everybody's hitting threes in the second half. Kennesaw State not slowing down either. So they went into the break with six made threes. Quick take to the rim. Rogers turned away by Thompson. Geronimo tries to close it out and he gets hit. Uh, before Thompson was well, at you, the apex three from Bates well, If you can get scoop Bates some looks uh, He will deliver man-to-man -man great screen by race Thompson That's how you get your buddies open and then he's doing it the defensive end as well He plays as hard as anybody is on my all weight room team He's gonna give you maximum effort every single night two blocks in this game would love to great run outs But that screen was critical to get Bates the wide open look all weight room team throw up another just settles list. Let's go. I mean you you definitely oh, yeah, we've got a list for that I mean, that's we'll, we'll pull that up for the next game But you definitely let number 25 off the bus first when you're on the road you Scare the opponents the fan and the man this guy but Who else is on that? Well, I got Connor McCaffrey on that. I mean Connor's on there. He's a weight room guy Hunter Dickinson in Michigan. He's definitely on the team. Save it for conference. Save the rest for conference. Your verbal list after. I mean, everybody wants to be on this team. Oh, there's another one for Kennesaw State. Right back at him, tied with Brandon Stroud. Brandon Stroud leads the team in rebound. Can you believe that? And can still step out and drill three point shots. Right, let's go. We got a shootout going. Miller Cobb with the three. Both teams over 50% in the half. And Kennesaw State not near that median. They're at 80% in the half. And Indiana leading it though. Good start points in the paint. Now he up on three and he did walk. Cole LaRue takes steps. Everybody in Assembly Hall thought so, except him. There's some good officials here in the crowd tonight. I and mean, these, these people, even back when I played, they know when to call a travel. No, that's not that's not tongue in cheek facetious at all. That's <laughs> that's that's legit. Educated fan base. <laughs> Rip through, tops into the free throw line. Yeah, no double team, no hesitation, rip and attack. So Thompson draws the foul. Hey, for the biggest Big Ten experience, there's no plus like home. The Big Ten Plus app, powered by Big Ten Network. Download and subscribe right now. So a couple at the line for Race Thompson, who's shooting above 75% on the season. And Jesse's got the rebounding part of it on his way to a second straight double-double. Needs the scoring to match it, though. Four points on the night. Yeah, he's a warrior. I mean, he's being asked to do a lot with all the injuries, but it'll be interesting. Final point on those guys working on their offense over the break. I mean, TJD and Race, you know, you bring Race off the bench as the five man to back up TJD and go with that smaller lineup. I, I think it's something they really have to look into. He's much more comfortable playing the five, pick and roll, posting up, pick and pop, than he is playing the four. Running around chasing small forwards defensively as well. He's gonna play a little point guard here, and that's automatic. Leading the break. The big spot from the wing tonight. His first team no, there won't be a timeout. We'll play on. 
Looks like Kennesaw State might take a timeout, get the crowd down a little bit, but Indiana stretches it up by six. And Bates with 15 points tonight. Man, he loves these pre-holiday games. Had a career high the day before, the day after Thanksgiving at 22. And there's Robinson stepping away from the basket. You know, that's one of those for Robinson with the coaching staff. Like, no, no, no. Oh, great shot. And that's just not really his game, but he drilled that one. And just ahead of the under eight. Indiana trying to distance themselves back up six with the Huchifino layout. Yeah, I just like this smaller lineup. You've got Grace at the five, Geronimo running around at the four. They're more active, they're quicker, there's more spacing, more driving lanes, more open three-point shooters. I think this is a good glimpse of what Indiana's offense can become. Three-point shooting, drives to the basket, scoop gates. I'll tell you what, this is a pure Big Ten Indiana Hoosier shot. Elbow. Mar Bates, man, he has hit three threes now in this game, just almost from the same exact spot, and that's got Indiana back in front. Well, when he's open, it's just automatic. You know when he releases it, it's going down. And they just have to find a way to get him more looks. He can also put the ball on the floor. An excellent passer can defend. He's a little surprised by the call right there. But he's going to be critical down the stretch for Indiana. I love this lineup right now. Race at the five. Geronimo in there. He can cover more ground. And that's that's a uh, that's a big decision. But just on those last four or five possessions, with our cop and open three. It's an open three. Race pushing the break. I like what they're doing right here. And if you're Kennesaw State, got to find a way to get probing into the paint, kickouts, keep that three-point shot going, because it's, it's going to be hard to score at the rim against these two rim protectors for Indiana. Not a lot of foul shots to be had. This is the one and one, so second shot achieved for Burden. And he gets them both. Indiana and Kennesaw State right at the 50% line from three. They're a little bit below. 48% for Kennesaw State. Indiana at 47%. And it is picked up from long range in the second half. But Shapino got his defender to fall down and an easy two. Yeah, everything's changed, right? So race is at the top, setting pick and rolls, dribble handoffs. The lane is wide open. No chance to double a post. Hood Shafino, Red Sea opens up and he just attacks. I love the way Indiana's playing offense right now, Connor. I can't say it enough. This is how they're going to have to play going forward in a lot of segments against Big Ten play. Every The word is on the street right now. You just fill the lane up, double and triple the centers, and make things difficult. Get Hood Shafino going to the rim. Nobody can do that to him. Great decision by the Indiana staff over the last five minutes to make the change. Well, look at those shooting numbers in the second half, too. Those two guys you're talking about, even split. And Hood Shafino is such a strong guard. I mean, you get him in high pick and roll action, he's got a mid range jumper. He shoots about 35% from the three. I mean, right now he's got some, he's got some pep to his step. He wants to attack again. And there he goes. I love it. There he goes back. Torrey gets it swatted. Stroud with the recovery. Mm -hmm. Numbers for Kennesaw State initially, and the three is too strong for Jennings. You mentioned a little mid-range Jess for Hood Shafino. That was the opening possession of the second half. And then shots started to fall for Indiana. Put a little 18-footer. Hoosiers did give up the lead after that, but holding on by six here. There's Bates. Tries the other side. No. And Geronimo. Tracks it down in a foul. I'm gonna go against Jennings. Keep it down here. Yeah, this group is playing extremely hard. They're making the extra pass, high IQ basketball, blocking shots, running the floor, closing out on shooters. And number 22 has been active. I mean, you can't say enough about him. When that hand is all messed up, it is hard to play this game. He's given Indiana everything he's got. He knows there's time off coming up, but he does not want to lose this game. So we were talking best high school players and best high school teams, Jess. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd see 22, and I, I just can't stop thinking about Damon Bailey, the number that he used to wear. Well, he was offered a scholarship right when he was in eighth grade by, by the general. 
And uh, season on the brink, I believe, came out in 86, as well as Hoosiers. Steve Alford was still here. You, you can imagine growing up in the state of Indiana or being on campus here in B-Town, late 80s. Steve Alford, Calvert Chain, national titles, Big Ten championships. It was just, I mean, you don't want to say you got spoiled, but it's still the Mecca, but that was one of the most glorious eras of Big Ten basketball and obviously Indiana basketball. And foul underneath on the reattack for Robinson. Well, we had a couple people coming at you at halftime. Dave Shondell was chiming in about Muncie, saying that Muncie Central Bearcats should get some love, Jess. Bonzi Wells. Hey, let's give them let's give them some love. It's, it's fine, but you know, I, I talked to Fish and Coach Woodson, and I, I'm very confident in my list. But I, and you know, look, Mylan with the Hoosiers movie. I mean, you got a lot of people hitting me with with tweets about Mylan. I, I don't I don't blame him. It's gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna take me two days to get back to all these people. I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to hit you up about the wigwam and Anderson. So, so you know more about it than I do. I'm just an outsider. I'm just, I, I went to the race and grew up going to the Indianapolis 500 and fell in love with Indiana basketball. Come on, Iowa guy, keep up. Yeah, the, the wigwam and, and Anderson, one of the, the biggest high school gyms in the country. Think about Newcastle too. Newcastle, Indiana yeah, gym, about 10,000. Right? Yeah. I'm going to get that foul on Thompson. The lead is six. Yeah, so I, 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 is this true? I, I once read that Newcastle, Alford's senior year, sold more tickets to his games than the Indiana Pacers did. Sure, I'll go with it. Sounds right. Yeah, we, need, we need some help with that one. Hey, Bart Fox, you're going to have to, uh, you're saying the Pacers usually get five or 6,000 for a game, so that might be true. Uh, Thompson misses, so uh, back in the hands of Kennesaw State. Inside six to go. Hoosiers trying to avoid giving Kennesaw State their first win ever against the Big Ten team. If you're Kennesaw State, number three, Youngbloods, got to find a way to make an impact in this game. Indiana's done a wonderful job with him. Another great drive by Cottle, but... Number three has to find a way to be elite over the last five minutes, even though he's been off. Cottle makes it a four-point game. It was tied at halftime at 27 aside, and Thompson lost it, almost got it back. But that looked like it was off Youngblood. Yeah, it was. So no shot clock reset. Didn't change hands, but Thompson and Youngblood kind of awkwardly went down. Clean up the blood before we resume. Final five plus from Assembly Hall. Final non-conference game either way. Kennesaw State will get into a sun play on New Year's Eve. And Indiana has a little break. They'll play Iowa on January 5th. So this is a feel good into the holiday type moment. There you go. Kennesaw State all over Bates on that spot. And gave it up. Kennesaw State hot early in this game and early in this half. By the way, that was a two for Cobb. And that pass over the top of Youngblood. Give you another look at it. Yeah, foot on the line. The right foot's on the line for Cobb. So no three, that'll be a two. Yeah, that, that's hard to believe. I mean, he's got to be behind that three-point line. I mean, that's a big basket. You've got to be behind the three-point line if you're a three-point shooter. But... What a tremendous defensive sequence for Bates. They have him playing the forward position. I love it. He's quick defensively. He switched. He bodied up. Forced a tough pass. And we know what he's doing at the offensive end. He just can't play any better than he is right now. He's going to make him pay again. Ooh, not here. Feeling off the hand, another one was going to stick for Bates. And Galloway cleaned it up on the backside. Here's Robinson one on one with Thompson. Tough look in Hood Shafino. Here's the glass and jump ball that'll go down with Indiana. 
Major fans wanted a foul. Their team lead has struggled to pull away. Kennesaw State has stayed within touch. All right, so Indiana has two timeouts. Kennesaw State, three timeouts. Coaches are telling their guys, if you get in trouble, use one. This is where Hood Shafino has to be at his best. This is a great test for him. A lot of pressure on him going forward with X out of the lineup. Do not turn the ball over. Make plays for your teammates. Same for Terrell Burden at the other end. He's got to get to the paint, get guys open, try to shoot Kennesaw State back into it. And they got it to an open cop, but thuds the three. And adjust just the second game in full-time duty, handling the ball as the primary ball handler for Jalen Hood Shafino. Xavier Johnson, surgery on Wednesday, and is out an indefinite amount of time. Oh, nice shake for Burden, and he drew the help and goes underneath to score. You know, that was just an elite play. I mean, Bates had him cut off. He paused, froze him, got to the other side. We just said he's got to finish strong, and he must have been listening. So that keeps it a two-possession game with a little over three minutes to go. Hoosiers looking for win number 10, kickball. Coach Shafino looking for that window to Thompson. And will be sideline out. Yeah, great decision to get the ball to Miller Cop on the play previously, and that one was a force. Those are the plays with three minutes to go at winning time you cannot make. Got lucky to get the ball back. And we'll see what he does with that second chance. Groping off the ball screen of Thompson. And then Galloway splitting the lane. Strong drive. And he's fouled. Yeah, great. So again, this high ball screen, pick and roll. Well for Indiana. Balls hard. Galloway get to the free throw line and got a feeling he's going to make both of these. And Galloway had eight points total in the last three games. He now has nine tonight. And you're 50% of the way to an accurate prediction, Jess. Yeah, he's just, uh, he's too good to have four to six points in a game. He's got to get himself more involved. An elite shooter. Oh. Oh, almost went back in. And second chance, Thompson off the tip. The Hoosiers get a chance to wind some more clock. Now inside, 10 to shoot. Out high with Hood Shafino. Hood Shafino, defender on his hip, and that sticks. It's like a freight train coming around the corner. Just a little bit of space. Takes the hit. It's a huge basket. No double-digit leads tonight, at least not yet for Indiana. Uh, timeout with the burden down to the ground. And second to last timeout for the Owls. Actually, two timeouts left. Down by. Got to make better decisions. He responded. He's up for coaching. Didn't complain. Didn't hang his head. It's been a big factor in the last couple possessions. And you know it's in there. Obviously, Mike Woodson was alluding to that, getting into him at shoot-around today. You know it's in there. And there's a three from Youngblood off the quick catch. And an offensive rebound for Robinson. And a reset for Kennesaw State. I figure they got to have some Burton's outside got, shots. Well, Burton's got Race Thompson on him. they got to find a way to get the ball to Burton. And Robinson got stripped. They call a foul on Cop coming over. And bonus time for Kennesaw State. They'll be the, at the line with 2 one to go. Yeah, got away with one there for Kennesaw State. I mean, they had Burden with the mismatch out front. They couldn't get the ball back to him. And kind of a careless foul there to send Robinson to the line. And a very pensive Demond Robinson. With the first one down. Yeah, you didn't get the ball outside. He gets it into Robinson. And yeah, yep. Good call by the official. It's an easy call. Robinson 50% from the free throw line on the season. And true to his average, he splits him. That is one big glaring weakness for Kennesaw State offensively. They shoot the three really well, but not shooting free throws well. 
And that's a foul way away from the basket on Jennings. Jason Jennings is fouled out. A brilliant start to this night for him. He finishes three of four from three with 11 points. We'll have to get a new body in for Kennesaw State. With the foul out for Jason Jennings. I'm just not a big fan of this rule. I mean, you foul out of the game. What's the what's the point of taking a couple minutes? You know, getting a kind of a free timeout to put somebody in. You foul out, put the next guy in, and let the play on. I thought that was going to be your argument for a sixth foul to be added. That you just don't like foul outs in general. Well, just the, just the delay, right, after they happen? Yeah. I mean, next guy in, let's play. There's too many too many delays down the stretch with all the reviews and the monitor. In the last two minutes, you can go to the monitor for everything. It just That seems like one where you... Can send the next guy in right away and let's let's carry on. All right, big possession for Kennesaw State here. Dribble penetration is going to be key. The best thing that can happen is they pick up the foul, get to the free throw line, stop the clock. Burden trying to get in there and he does pick up a foul. Pop less convinced about that one than the last one he had on Robinson. Well, I agree with Miller Cop on that one. That looked pretty offense initiated. So big free throws here. That's a that's a huge miss. Now you want to obviously make the second one for a plethora of reasons, but look for Kennesaw State to set up full court pressure. If he makes this second one, if you're Indiana, you got to know it's coming. Got one of two. And Kennesaw State is a 62% free throw shooting team. It's near the bottom of the country. It's 13th in their league in the A Sun. And then back to back trips, just getting one. So here's that pressure you're talking about, Jess. And Cop gets it ahead. And Huchafino's got numbers on the two on one, kept it himself, and drew the foul. Excellent job by Bates and Miller Cop. Hood Shafino passing the ball up the floor. Took a little bit of a risk attacking here, but when you have the two on one, you want to do it. Maybe a small extension of the arm, but good call by the officials. Get to the free throw line and knock these ones in. What a great experience for the youngster to be under pressure like this. You can't add to what's a match of his career high. Of course, he's a freshman, so career high season high all the same. But back-to-back -back games with 17 points. Best in his rookie year. And a new season best. 68%. Yeah, 68% from the free throw line on the season. He's got to get that up in the mid-80s. He's got too nice of a shot. Losers have led by 10 a couple of times now late in this game. Struggle to get to this point. But a minute 20 from win number 10. And Burden, no bounce. Thompson, the rebound. And Indiana looking for a closing possession. See if they get a shot up or if Kennesaw State fouls. And they don't in the first 10 seconds. And then they'll play it out. Here's Bates. Big night out there already. And falling away. It's all going down. And out for two. Short over the top and foul is called with Bates on the block out And that should Just about do it on the close for Bates Well, this is such a difficult Kobe Bryant top of type of shadow we'll called a Calvert Cheney Lefty fader, but yeah, he puts him to sleep. He's feeling pretty good about the score right now still a little bit too much time on the clock for that but Bates has been a star in this one. It just you talk about confidence going into Christmas break. He's been outstanding. 
What else has been outstanding, Connor, has been the defense for Indiana, especially in the second half. And Miller Cop, Galloway, Bates, they've been switching. I've got young blood and burden four out of 20 from the floor in this game. Nobody has been able to do that to him. Nobody will be able to do that going forward. Those are two great players. And as Indiana guards, the interchangeable parts, the positionless basketball, they have been excellent, especially in the second half, of locking down at the defensive end. Now, the only team that has come close to doing that to those two guys from Kennesaw State has been San Diego State. And San Diego State, the Aztecs, have built up a pretty good reputation nationally defensively. So that's good company to be in if you're the Hoosiers. Yeah, no question. I mean, San Diego State can really lock it down. But this was a tough fight. Smart, high IQ win for Indiana. They were challenged. Christmas break is going to feel so much better now. But this is the way they have to play going forward. I'm excited for their potential, especially with the guys they have coming back. Xavier Johnson out for a while. Trace Jackson Davis out tonight. But Indiana, in the end, wins it by 14 and get win number 10 before Christmas. They had to fight.